In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I built this rotational golf swing and how I've done so as a disabled golfer with an extreme restriction in mobility. So I'm Jonathan Chan with J Chan Golf. Let's dive right into it. So there are a lot of misconceptions out there on what it takes to be able to achieve a rotational golf swing in the downswing and through impact there without too much stall in your body, hands exiting nicely left around your body with a nice stable club face. And the main misconception I hear on a daily basis is golfers saying that they are not mobile enough or they're not athletic enough to do this. And really you can understand that from a lot of commentators, for example, on TV when you're watching the golf, there'll be a slow-mo of a player coming through impact and they're saying they can rotate that well through the golf ball because they're so strong, they're so athletic you know, talking about the athleticism of golfers nowadays. But really, I have not found that to be true one bit from my own personal experience and from the experience of my students who we've got more rotational golf swings through having a good amount of lessons there. And really from there, for me, I should be the last person to be able to rotate efficiently through the golf ball, but I've managed to develop it in my golf swing. So with my own journey to build a rotational golf swing. Now, like I just said, I'm someone who really shouldn't be able to do this if I need to be extremely athletic and mobile to do it because I have a disability that really affects my range of motion and my strength up my left side. I have cerebral palsy. So for me, my left hand side of my body is extremely tight where the muscles are physically shorter and they're a lot smaller as well than my right hand side. So for me, it affects me to the point where I, when I walk, I walk with a limp, for example, because the muscles are so much shorter on my left side like I said, 50% weaker on my left side as well. So we know in the downswing, for example, when we're moving on to our lead side, so for me being a right-handed golfer, that's my left side, that's my weak and tight side, I really shouldn't be able to rotate through the golf ball because the muscles are one, not mobile enough, and they're technically, if you go by that logic, they're not strong enough to be able to get my force into that left side in the transferring in the downswing. But I've still managed to do it. And this is what I find universally across the board, whether it's a golfer who's disabled like myself or whether it's a golfer who is just generally your average golfer who just doesn't think they can rotate. It has very little to do with your physical capability. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're bigger, you're stronger, you're more athletic, of course, you're gonna find it way easier, but you would find every technique in the golf swing a hell of a lot easier to do when you're more athletic. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna look at two of my swings, one from around five years ago and one from today. So really, you're gonna see my today one. I can rotate a hell of a lot better than I did five years ago, but back then that was my first season as a professional. So really from there, I was actually at physically my strongest that I've ever been, and I was at my most mobile, because as a full-time playing professional back then, obviously like modern golfers now, we spend a lot of time in the gym getting stronger. And for me, for my disability, I have to do it. I have to be in the gym, otherwise my muscles will get a lot worse. So I should have been back then way more able to rotate here. So let's have a look at two of them and we're gonna see what's the difference. So I can tell you what, I am certainly not as strong as I was back then. I might not look strong back then, but I definitely am more so than I am now, that's for sure. So let's have a little look at these two swings here. So with these two swings, you can see on the left-hand side, that is me from about five years ago, and me on the right here, that is me from today. So what we're gonna see, we're gonna go through these swings side by side, and we're gonna see two things be very different in the golf swing here. So these are two things that if they are slightly off, they will stop your body's ability to rotate. Let's get to takeaway. So shaft parallel to the ground, on my old swing. You can see how my hands have disconnected away from me a little bit, a little bit of a forearm roll, club head on the inside of the hands, club face very open here, so you can see quite open to my spine angle. So let's have a little look at the newer one. So we can see my hands have gone a lot more in and around. Club head still a little bit inside my hands for sure, but you can see the club face is now matching my spine angle. So my club face is square on the new one and it's open on the old one there. So let's continue to go through the swing. So we're gonna see, we know that club face is open on the old one. We know the hands are disconnected. And from here, I'm not gonna get that much turn as I'm going up to the top of my swing here. See how my hands are moving vertically upwards. They're not working around my body. So as we stop there, we can see club face is horrendously open 
really open. You know, I cringe looking at this video all the time. I, I keep this video because it reminds me of how bad my golf swing used to be. It makes me feel better about my swing now. <laughs> so as we can see here, club face is open, but as well, I don't have too much depth at the top of the backswing. So if I draw a line from the hand straight down to the ground, you can see how they're over the balls of my feet. Now let's move up to the top of my swing on the newer swing. So we can see I'm turning my body a little bit better, getting a further turn, a very different position here at the top of the backswing. You can see how my club face is a lot squarer. At the top here, we can start to see a little bit of grooves on the other side of the shaft there. And we can see my left arm is a lot more across my chest. I'd say my left arm's probably a little bit too low there to be perfectly honest. But if we draw a line for that depth again here, from the butt end of the club down towards the ground, around my ankle region here. So really what we can see, the massive two things here, club face, club face is open on the left and it is nice and square on the right here and depth. We can see I don't have that much depth to my hand at the top of the backswing and I have more depth to my hands at the top of the backswing on the new one. So depth of our hands, all that means is the deeper our hands at the top of the backswing, the more behind us they are. The less deep they are, the more on top of us they are. So why that matters in a golf swing, and we're gonna see that right now. So let's go through the old one. Okay, we know club face is open, we haven't got too much depth. Now when we don't have too much depth and those hands directly over, let's say more of our toe region, that's gonna cause the club to move a little bit out in front of us in the downswing. So a little bit out to in, a little bit early. Now. Why that is, is because when we have a little bit of a rotational move to start off the downswing with, which we all will, even if we're trying to rotate more, we'll still rotate a little bit in the downswing in transition. The hands will always follow the direction you're rotating. So my hands are gonna go outwards because I'm rotating towards a target. The hands are gonna follow, so the hands will move outwards. So if we don't have too much depth at the top of the backswing, our hands are gonna move out in front of us, but too far out in front of us, where now they're gonna be traveling down the downswing. If I get myself around to the left arm parallel here, where it's a little bit over our plane here. You can see club face still open, hands very much in front of my body. I've gotta do a lot there to get my path back on track. And that will be by stalling rotation. So let's get into the same spot here. Get us to left arm parallel to the ground. So we can see left arm parallel to the ground here. You can see I've probably shallowed the club, maybe even slightly better on the old one but the depth is not helping me, that lack of depth. To where now we can see, where are my hands? My hands are deeper at left arm parallel. They're in line with my right bicep. They're in line here on the old one with more of my, my left chest area. So that's telling me that at left arm parallel to the ground here, that I am gonna be more inclined on the right hand side one, my new one, to be swinging a little bit more on the inside because that rotation that I've done to start off my downswing now it hasn't got the hands going too far ahead. It's still moved the hands outwards in this direction, but it's no longer too far ahead of my body now. It's manageable. The club has moved on path rather than moving outside the path there. So let's continue to go on with this horror show of a swing of my old swing here. So let's continue to go down. As you can see, club is still quite open. Now my body rotation is stalling very, very hard. My chest is really stalling out its rotation. And as you can see with my hands and arms here, if I draw a big circle around that region, you can see now they're working very, very hard to be able to square up that club face. Really working those hands hard because that club face is far too open coming into that golf ball. Body rotation is stopping. And just because I have to get that club back onto the golf ball again. And as you can see, as I'm zooming in, Look at the club face here. See how it's pretty much open a split second before impact. So that tells you how much I have to stop my body's rotation. And then coming through the ball here, you can see club face is flipping over quite hard. And I'm having a little bit of a roll release through the golf ball there. Now, let's zoom back out a little bit. Let's look at the new swing. So new swing here, we can see I'm continuing to move down nicely. I'm continuing a nice steady rotation of my chest. The club is moving a little bit more on path, which we'll see in a minute. And we can see that club face is now square. Look at that pre-impact, the club face is square. I've rotated my chest, hasn't stopped at all. I wouldn't say it's rotating brilliantly. That's one of my 
faults in my golf swing is I don't rotate my chest fast enough in the downswing. But we can see there it's not stalling out with its rotation. It's continuing to rotate and we can see how passive that club is moving through the golf ball. It still has not flipped over yet. Now, I'm not trying to hold this club face off, which is another massive misconception. There is no hold off happening here. The club and the hands are just following my body's rotation here. They're just going around my body because I'm not stalling through impact here. So as soon as we got that club face a little bit squarer, so coming back where the club face was matching my spine angle, right there at the takeaway move. And then as I turned up to the top of my swing, I freed up my turn. I had a little bit more, which you wouldn't have seen from the analysis there. I started to add in a lot more flair to my back foot because then that would range and really free up the range of motion of my hip turn. And I'd also lift up my lead heel quite a bit more, which you could probably see a little bit on that analysis there. Really lifted up my left heel quite a bit more. That gave me more range of movement because for me, I physically cannot, with my makeup of my body, turn that much whilst keeping everything quite nice and standard there. I can't do it. And that's really the point I want to get across to a lot of you out there, like especially whether it's from age or whether it's from disability or weakness, for example. We can't be trying to swing the standard way for everyone. We need to make sure that we're doing things to help us, like what I said here with helping me turn, because that turn really helped me get that depth to where I could have easily thought there, I just, with my disability, I can't turn. It's just something I can't do. I can't turn up there because I don't have the range of motion. But there are things I can do in my golf swing to help me turn, like flaring out the back foot, lifting up that left heel. And then that's about as much as I can turn there because by no means, guys, can I get a full turn still. I still can't, but I can get enough of a turn to get that depth. And then from there, as I come down the downswing, the club isn't gonna get, be getting too far out in front of me in the downswing. The club face is gonna be square, of course, because it was square earlier. And then boom, I could rotate through the shot. So let me tell you what kind of drills I did to be able to help me get that club face squarer and more depth at the top of my backswing. Because this is really common that I see quite often with players. Open club face, it's a lack of depth here. So like we know, there are more variables to be able to rotate, shallow the shaft, keeping your tilts in your downswing, all that stuff. I'll put up a card for a video just about that. But for me personally in my golf swing, this is what was stopping me. So ultimately we don't all have every single variable that will stop us to rotate through there that we're doing poorly we'll always just have a, a select few in there that are more unique to our golf swings so you can see what i've done here i've grabbed my tour bag here and what i've done i've got an alignment stick coming out of it so really from here this is going to work on my depth this is one thing i did a lot of to be able to get myself having the depth so we talked about just a minute ago how i freed up that turn the more turn i got the deeper it got my hands at the top of the backswing, more turn gives you more depth. But I also wanted something to do that would give me physical feedback here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a ball here and I'm gonna put it about three quarters of the way underneath this stick. Cause you can see this stick's coming out the bag, 45 degree-ish angle, it's probably a bit lower than that. But you can see I've got good feedback now. If I vertically go up with my lead arm and it goes upwards with a lack of depth, I'm gonna hit this stick. So what I've got to do here to be able to miss this stick obviously get up my nice full turn, as full turn as you can get. It's gonna be different for everyone. And then as I get up to the top of my backswing, if I'm missing that, I'm gonna be getting quite good depth up there. If I do that now, I'll probably get a little bit too much. So that took care of the depth part. If you're gonna see here from a slow-mo, it's really gonna give me good depth. And probably you could see from there, as we just said, a little bit too much for sure. But if you're really struggling with that lack of depth, perfect for you. So we knew there was one more element in there as well, club face, which was the more important one, to be perfectly honest, is with me, hands would go a little bit out of the way for me, club face would open. So really from here, we needed to get that club face squarer earlier. One of my sayings, if you've been watching a lot of my videos, get that club face as square as you possibly can, as early as you can. So another thing that I did is something that I tell a lot of you to, to do in videos as well, is this little drill for the takeaway for your club face. What I did, I got to my Takeaway position here, shaft parallel to the ground. Grooves pointing down towards the ground a little bit here. Club face matching my spine angle. I made my hands go a little bit more in, closer to my right leg. And then that caused that club face to be nice and square there. So quite often I say with a glove logo, making that point down towards the ground. But ultimately I was just getting in a takeaway position here and stopping and making sure that club face was square. And then what I'll do from there, look back at that golf ball, checked everything was okay. Then I'll swing up and swing through still trying to miss that. So the pause drill. So here we go. Yep, it's nice and square, matching my spine angle, hands are closer to my thigh, swing up, swing through. 
So really from there guys, you can see with doing that, it's gonna get the variables in place that I needed to do personally in my goal swing to be able to rotate more, to prime me to rotate. I'm not instantly gonna start rotating from there, but I will have a better chance to do it. Me adding rotation then won't be of a detriment to your golf swing. So that's, this is really the whole point of this video here, guys, is really that to rotate more efficiently in the golf swing, it's not so much a question of can your body rotate, because we can all rotate, but we will all rotate at different kind of rates. Some of us will get as open as a Dustin Johnson. Some of us will only get as open as like, let's say a French Francesco Molinari still gets open quite a bit, but as a tour player, probably a little bit less than others there, to where we all have that capability. It's not so much that our body is stopping us, it's what we're doing in our golf swing that is stopping us to be able to rotate there. I've got a lot of players, a lot of students here that are a little bit older, who are absolutely one of them, Alan, who's 90. Alan, I've mentioned him in one of my other videos before as well, he can rotate through that golf ball. Someone who, you know, he is of course, he's 90, so he doesn't have the best range of motion at all. We haven't physically tried to force him to rotate or do anything like that. We just got his variables in a good place, let his body do what he wants to do, and he just started rotating a little bit better straight away. Was he Dustin Johnson? No, of course not. He was just a little bit open there. But when that club face was nicely matched up, it wasn't too open in his golf swing. He was able to rotate and the ball flight was a hell of a lot more consistent. To be honest, Alan is probably one of the people that I've seen who is the most robotic in where he can land his golf ball again and again and again. I remember one lesson, he would hit some shots and there'll be almost every single ball would be landing quite close together. Because if you've got a rotational golf swing and if your swing speed is a little bit slower as well, that's gonna make your club face even more stable as well. So really for Alan, that just created the thing where he was just extremely on it all the time once we got that little area for us. So once we've got the stuff we need in our golf swing to be able to rotate, then it's all about getting the reps in there. So without dragging the video on guys, I'll put out a card for that for good drills to do to get you to rotate. But really, make sure you've got the variables in place and then you'll be able to rotate and you'll be able to get those drills in to help you along the way though. So it's variables, not so much how your body is. Now, now of course, you can be someone, I know definitely people out there whose bodies physically can't turn. So there are some people out there where that won't work. And by no means am I saying you must swing very, very rotational. If you feel better playing golf, having a rotational flip hand release through the golf ball, you can by all means do it. Like I said, really the 90s and really I'd say 70s, 80s, 90s showed us that that can work. It can work quite nicely. So if you want to play golf with that, by all means, go play golf like that. Just my preference in the golf swing is to be a little bit more freely rotational in my golf swing there because it will help just a little bit more for consistency and it will help me stay with a consistent powerful swing in there as well guys so if you like the video guys make sure you click that like button if you want more golf instruction just like this hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button too to be notified every time i put out a video so again a little bit more of a talky video rather than a lot of action going on all the time but i hope you learned a little bit about me anyway from today and i hope you learned a little bit about what is actually necessary to be able to build a rotational golf swing